Hi kids, Pastor Brian here with this week's Answers from Above. Today's question is, are dinosaurs in the Bible? If you were with us last week, we heard how in the very beginning, God created the earth and everything on it in six days by His almighty power. Now we don't know how all those creatures that God made in the beginning may have changed since then, but we do know that God made all life here on earth whether big or small, whether on the land or on the sea. He did that in the same week in which he made the first people. Now I can say I've read the Bible through several times, and the word dinosaur is not found in the Bible. But that's because the word dinosaur wasn't first used until 1841 by a British paleontologist named Sir Richard Owen. He used this word to describe the lizard-like creatures that he and other scientists were digging their fossils up out in the ground. But just because the word dinosaur is in the Bible doesn't mean that the Bible doesn't describe dinosaur-like creatures. For example, let's say that you had never seen a cow before in your life. And you had to describe one to your friends after seeing it for the first time. You might say it was a, a big black and white animal uh, that had hooves and horns. It ate grass and every so often it went moo. Now, although you didn't use the word cow, everyone you talked to would know that you were talking about a cow. Well, in the Bible, in the book of Job, chapters 39 to 41, the Lord appeared to a man named Job. And he spoke to him out of a storm cloud. And he wanted Job to look at some different animals. Many animals that we still have around today, like the donkey, or the horse, or the hawk. And he said to Job, look at those animals, and I want you to tell me you know, why they do what they do. Why do they act the way that they do? And of course, Job couldn't answer God's question. He couldn't figure out why those animals were all so different and yet so incredible. And that was kind of God's point. But then God went further and he talked to Job about two of his biggest, greatest creatures. He calls them Behemoth and Leviathan. And he wanted Job to look at them. And as God had done with the other animals, he describes Behemoth and Leviathan what they looked like and how they acted. He says that Behemoth was huge. It had bones that were hard as metal, that it could stand in a raging river and that river couldn't move it or make it budge. That had a tail like a tree trunk, but yet it was gentle and it ate grass like a cow. Now, God didn't use the word dinosaur, but behemoth sure sounds like one. After that, God talks about his other creature, Leviathan, that lived in the sea. He says that Leviathan was so mighty that no weapon could harm it in any way, that it had rows of shield along its back, it had fearsome teeth, and it even shot fire out of its mouth. Now, once again, uh, Leviathan isn't named a dinosaur, but it sure sounds like one. So if the Bible talks about dinosaur-like creatures, we might wonder, well, where did all the dinosaurs go? Unfortunately, the Bible doesn't answer that question as exactly as we might want. Some people think that maybe the worldwide flood that God sent uh, destroyed many of the dinosaurs and the ones that were left on the ark with Noah and his family weren't able to adapt to life outside of the ark after the flood. Others think that perhaps the dinosaurs that lived after the flood were seen as being so fierce and dangerous by people that people just did all they possibly could to wipe them out so that we don't have any of the biggest, baddest ones around anymore. But I admit that all those are just people's best guesses. But one thing that we don't need to guess about 
is that big as dinosaurs may have been, the creature that God has always loved and cared for more than anything else, despite our small size, is people. You and me. And God showed us how much he loved us. That he sent his son, Jesus, to the cross to take away all of our sins. So we can have the assurance that God always cares about us. That he's always by our side, guiding us through life until we're with him in heaven. Let's pray. Dear God, in your wisdom, you have made some incredible creatures. But we praise and thank you most of all for making each one of us and making us the way that you want us to be and guaranteeing us that you love and care for us because of your Son, Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Well, kids, that's all for this week's Answers from Above. Keep on sending me your questions. They've been wonderful. God bless. I'll see you next time.